trying to go. Good morning and welcome to this week. Hello, hello, Michael, you're back, welcome. Thank you. And Scott, you look like you're out in the nature. You yeah, had a I natural a, kind of look to you this morning. I'm in a botanical garden, uh, enjoying some splendid weather. Uh, so it's really, it's great. It's, it's beautiful. You look like you're going a little gray there. Oh Are yeah, it, I yeah. am definitely going. I've been waiting for this since I was about 12 years old. So finally. Well, I am not going gray. <laughs> <laughs> don't, Michael, don't you laugh, because I see you getting a little thin there on the top, comrade. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Revolution, everybody. Hope everybody is doing great. Uh, let's get started. Well, it's been one hell of a week. Did you guys see the uh, funeral for uh, uh, Representative Lewis yesterday? It's quite an event. Uh, anybody watch it? No? Yes? I saw I, the Sunday uh, demonstration where they took his body across the, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, you know, for right, the time right. Sunday, but I did not see the funeral, but it is. You have to, yeah. you have to watch it. It's quite a, um, the President uh, Obama spoke along with uh, Mr. Clinton and Mr. Bush, Reverend Lawson and um, Speaker Pelosi. It was quite a, quite a, Quite a service. Uh, I was particularly impressed with Reverend Lawson's uh, eulogy. He said, y'all didn't know John the way I knew him. And the <laughs> history that has been written about him is really not accurate, you know? And he talked about Lewis's central role in the organization of the city and him. He paid in particular attention to Nashville and the uh, fight to desegregate the city and said that it was the first effort of its kind to totally tear down Jim Crow. They went into the bathrooms and they tore down the whites only signs and to the drinking fountains and tore it down to the buses and tore it down and uh, uh, so on and so forth. And they won, it was a big, big- and I think that, that gets to a, a lot of the misconceptions maybe about mm -hmm. what, you know, the civil rights movement was what nonviolence meant in it, um, because I think people often have this image of um, people being very of the, of the protesters being very passive and just sort of waiting to you know for the the forces of of repression to show the their violence. But this was it was not a passive movement at all. It was an extremely active one. Um, as you mentioned, tearing down the signs, um, going into these places that were reserved for, you know, whites only and, and disrupting them. Uh, yes, it was a, it was getting in good trouble. That's the way uh, John Lewis and Reverend Lowry and them <coughs> uh, characterized it. And I, I saw a post from a friend who I've been debating on Facebook, an old college mate, and he said, and a po you shouldn't, you need to obey the lawful commands of the police. And I was like, really? Because if that was the case, then the whole purpose and the strategy and tactics of the civil rights movement uh, would have been out the window because they were protesting unjust laws. And the whole the strategy goes, of every people's and democratic movement would be out the window. You know, because Michael, I mean, if you if, if you did that, you couldn't sit in. And when they told you to get up, you have would have to get up, Mike. And exactly. Yeah. And he got beat up for it. I think he was he was beat up at lunch counters, but particularly he's most famous for, you know, getting attacked on the Selma, the Edmund Peters Bridge and uh, mm -hmm. during the Freedom Rides. And, you know, he he was he worked with everyone. I think that's what was most impressive hearing, you know, the different eulogies was, of course, he was a contemporary of Martin Luther King, you know, he looked to mm -hmm. him as, as, as a leader, you know, a mentor, but he even, you know, um, collaborated with uh, Kwame Ture and other, you know, people on, on you know, the left, you know, far, probably farther to the left than us and such in many ways, but he clearly understood um, the class struggle, you know, yes, he served as a Democrat, but he really was, I think, the embodiment 
of what the civil rights movement was, particularly for the youth, because he was young. He was not, you know, a mature uh, pastor at the time, like, you know, Martin Luther King or even like Malcolm X. You know, he was the younger. Are you saying that, that Democrats don't understand the class struggle? Did I hear a little bit of that in your, <laughs> in your, because uh, I'm not, Michael, I mean. <laughs> Uh, not all, not sure not all. but what I'm saying is with often they're quickly dismissed. People like, you know, AOC or Bernie or, you know, they're quickly dismissed um, for mm. simply participating in bourgeois uh, 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 democracy. And what other kind of democracy is there? In this country, country, that's the only one we have. <laughs> it's a bourgeois town, y'all. You better wake <laughs> up. You know, um, the other thing about um, uh, Lawson is he said Lewis characterized the period from 57, 58 through 73 as the nonviolent movement period, not as the civil rights period. Mm -hmm. he, had a, he had a different understanding of it, which I thought was an interesting formulation. The other thing that he said that was quite interesting was that Lawson, that is, he uh, chastised what he called plantation capitalism. Plantation capital, I love, I love that because a lot of people are discussing uh, Scott racial capitalism now, which um, I don't have any argument with. I don't have a beef with the concept, but I kind of like uh, uh, Reverend Lawson's plantation capitalism. Well, I mean, there's more and more work from, from historians uh, suggesting that um, uh, slavery was not, you know, apart from or, or some sort of earlier holdover from before capitalism. It was, it was at the core of, of capitalism in this country. It, it developed many of the, the methods of, of management, of accounting for time uh, that would later be introduced into, um, into industrial capitalism. So, um, you know, in a certain sense, and then the 1619 project, you know, goes in that direction as well, showing that um, the, um, um, Slavery was not an aberration, it was the foundation. Of, foundation. Of, it was central central to the development. I've always understood it that way. That's the way I was taught by, uh, you know, the Du Bois and Ab Decker and uh, Carter G. Woodson and, and all of the rest of the great historians, Michael, of the, uh, of the history of racism and slavery. Eric Williams and capitalism in this in this country. Um, well, another thing that happened this week was that Scott, your president, said <laughs> that um, he don't want to have no election. He said we need to postpone it. And well, it's, um, it's, you know, it's real funny because uh, he wants to reopen the schools and you know force kids and teachers back to school, force people back to work in businesses. But when it comes to an election, oh, it's <laughs> it's it's unsafe. Can't have that, right? Have, right. Isn't it? Um, isn't it funny though? How and I, I guess not funny. It's more sad and, and scary than anything. But you know, because we don't have fascism right now. There's a fascist danger. You know that the GOP definitely has some extreme right tendencies, particularly in the Trump administration. But every time we say that, ah, we don't have fascism quite yet, we edge closer and closer and closer. And I know uh, I was discussing with some other comrades just a few weeks ago, you know, well, when he cancels the election, then we know that we're really, and you know, <laughs> we're just, we're almost there. We're almost there. You know, we have immigrant children in cages, um, you know, uh, the Muslim ban, he, you know, building a wall. He ran on these things. He got elected on those kind of, you know, advertising those policies. And it's Sounds just, like you know, what the else is there? Yeah, it sounds like one of them kids in a car on a long trip on vacation. Are we there yet? Are, are we there yet, Dad? Are we there yet, Mom? <laughs> Shut up, chunks. No, we're not there. I told you five minutes ago. No lunch for you if you don't. Um, <laughs> don't make me come you, back there. Don't make me come back there. It's always wrong to deprive children of food. <laughs> uh, you don't. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. But it was a dangerous um endeavor uh it may have been kind of a, a, a testing ground what do you call that when you throw something out there to see how like people trial react balloon, test balloon. trial balloon yeah Dark the uh the uh senators and the both the democrats and the republicans came out quickly and said no 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 we're not having you know you 
I thought that was, uh, and not that that will stop Trump, because he's going to do basically what he wants to do. He basically, you know, doesn't he doesn't really care. Yeah, so an interesting uh, article. Um, the Supreme Court ruled that um, the Trump um, White House had to continue the DACA program in its original form. He wasn't allowed to just, you know, modify the terms of it. Um, but they're doing exactly that right now. They've, you know, they're saying, oh, you know, everything's uncertain. So we're going to, we're not processing any new applications. We're just putting them in a bucket. You know, we're just, um, we're going to hold off. So they've effectively already defied the Supreme Court on, on the DACA ruling. Uh, lawless. Just... They're lawless, man. They just do what they want to do. They don't, you know. You know, you, you figure you do, you know, um, all that is um, not explicitly forbidden is allowed, and even that which is explicitly forbidden, you just freaking ignore. You know, you just ignore it, and and uh, you know we'll deal with it later. And uh, offense, offense, offense. That's you know their mantra, and that's what they have been able to get away with uh, so far. But they say, Scott, that your homeboy, the guy you grew up next to, Joe Biden, uh, that you have beers with every Sunday, uh, is yes. doing quite well. And uh, and uh, the Democratic Party convention is coming up in a couple of uh, weeks. Uh, but more importantly, the issue, Michael, is what will be the response of the uh, Democratic opposition, and I say that with a small d, to the economy, because the GDP contracted by 10% and uh, spun out over the course of a year, 30% drop is the biggest drop in history. And unemployment claims have gone up, or at least they were the same that they were last uh, a week. The numbers have not gone down, it seems to have flattened. Um, doesn't bode well, Michael, for uh, the working class. And, and, and then you got the HEROES Act, what's gonna happen? Um, you know, I think that's very passable. I think that's passable because like you said, there's people on both sides of the aisle who, you know, understand that for them to, uh, retain the support of their constituents, they're gonna to have to pass it, A. Mm. Trump's coming out and saying, ah, maybe we'll cancel the elections. And there were Republicans that came out and said, no, that's not gonna happen. And so you do see unity and not just amongst politicians, but amongst working people, everyday working people. And you know, I remember us saying a few months ago that when, when Bernie dropped out of the race, that his message triumphed. And that's true. They're still out there talking about, you know, um, universal healthcare in the middle of a pandemic. And if indeed Joe Biden wins in November, it's going to be a people's victory because it's going to be the people that defeat the fascist danger, not because Joe Biden's some great superhero, right? It's going to be the people coming together around these issues in this time of crisis, uniting together because they're sick and tired of what's happening. You know, they're, they're still, I was on the subway this morning, uh, coming to the office. It was empty. I took pictures. It's empty at rush hour, right? And this is New York City. And so what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Every day is like Sunday, uh, Scott, in New York City. People are well, this, I mean, the HEROES Act is really interesting because it's, you know, it, it, it really could be the object of a, of a bipartisan compromise. There's nothing in it that is especially, you know, wildly radical. Um, but the, the opposition of the Republican Party and their attempt to, to just nickel and dime it, arguing about, oh, $200 a week or 70% of pre-pandemic income or whatever, um, they're turning this into an ideologically polarized issue that, that resonates with people, right? You, you have people out of work and you're telling them, you know, oh, you know, you're going to lo lose your house, but if we give you 600 bucks a week, you're not going to want to go back to work. That doesn't, that's not going to work. I think they're making it into something destructive for them. Um, My prediction is that it will pass, but it's not going to pass today. I think that they're going to put forward an extension uh, to cover their butts over the next couple of weeks, maybe a month, 
and then they're going to come back to it. But they're eventually going to pass it because we know what time it is. It's election time. And the Senate, the Republicans are fighting for survival. Because Michael, and so what, do you, what do you think about this? I think, I can't remember if it was Trump or one of the other Republican leaders who floated the idea of separating out the, the unemployment um, increase, the 600 bucks a week, and, and passing that separately um, right now and leaving the rest of the bill for later. And um, I believe uh, Pelosi and, and Schumer have been resisting uh, that. Um, you know, insisting that the bill be voted as a block. Uh, what well, are your there's thoughts? several different pieces of it. You know, there's also aid to the state and cities mm -hmm. who are experiencing tremendous shortfalls. You know, and uh, so that that and I don't see how they can afford to uh, not address that issue because there will be additional layoffs, fire department. You know, state workers. Uh, and, um, you know, street cleaners, uh, garbage uh, disposal, water, so on and so forth, electric and, well, and custodial. So it, custodial. And uh, all of the workers that they said were not important and not at all, oh, they're frontline, but they don't want to support them economically in the way that they need to be supported so that they our working class people can survive. And there's the rub. So I think, I think that, uh, that they're fighting to keep those things together. But we'll see what happens because the, the, the main thing is that we, um, that $600 extension has to go forward. And uh, we predicted that it would. Uh, when, uh, and we'll see if our crystal ball is right. Of course, Marxism don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> we can't we can predict the future, but we can look at the trends as they are emerging, Michael, and, uh, and, and the conditions of, of, of what is uh, happening. Well, I hear some children in the background. <laughs> the children are playing. The birds are singing. The bells are ringing. And uh, it's about time for us to end. Do we have any good articles or good programs coming up? I know that there's a town hall forum on unemployment that the PW and others are organizing coming up on, I believe, August 16th on Sunday at 8 o'clock. We want to invite everybody to, to join in with some wonderful uh, uh, speakers. It's going to be a great and important conversation because, Scott, the main thing, we want to talk about the HEROES Act, you want to talk about passing uh, legislation against voter suppression. You want to talk about ending war. Pressure, maximum pressure has to be placed on the ruling classes and, and getting, on both parties. And getting back to that, you know, the good trouble that John Lewis talked about. Uh, I saw a really inspiring um, thing uh, this morning. There's a group of, of protesters who gathered outside of a courthouse in New Orleans uh, mm. to prevent, uh, they were blocking access to the courthouse to prevent evictions from being processed. You know, mm. standing in the way to keep people in their homes. And, and that's, you know, that's another kind of that, that good trouble, that necessary, you know, work of getting in the way of injustice. And, and that's what it's gonna take. Concrete, militant steps, to defend the right of working class people to uh, earn, uh, to learn, to live, to have housing, to have health care, Michael, uh, to be able to go see the doctor. And we got to not forget immigrants, undocumented immigrants who ain't got no papers and who are catching holy hell uh, in the course of this crisis. We, we certainly can't forget about them, our solidarity. I'm sorry? I said it's a hard time for them unless they have cash and go to a doctor who doesn't accept insurance, there, you know, there's nothing they can do. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, criminal what's happening. We can't uh, allow it. Well, uh, I think that that does it for this week. Um, write your senator, tell them to do the right thing and pass the HEROES Act. They're calling, the Republicans call theirs the, 
the healing act. <laughs> what do they call it? The, the heal. Heals act. Heals act. The two definitions of that word, <laughs> heals. One is to make better. The other is the bottom of your foot. <laughs> you can be a heal, you know. Yep. Or bringing, I, bringing someone to heal. Like bringing someone to heal. We need to bring fascism and the threat of fascism to heal. And that we, we, we Republicans have to uh, stop acting like heels. And, they say um, we're in favor of cancel culture, and, and so be it. We're going to cancel. We're going to cancel the extreme right. We call it abolition. They call it cancel culture. And right. Trump screwed himself on that one. Trump said the most patriotic thing you can do is wear a mask, and he's not wearing one. So there you go. That means he's not a patriot. All right. Well, on that note, we'll end. Uh, have a great day, a great weekend. We'll see everybody this time, this station, next week. Later, Bye later. Now.